thank you thank you everyone for uh, for joining this session we have panel up with us a quick introduction of, uh, of panel up panel up is a globally recognized award winning innovator entrepreneur and technologist she holds around 20 years of experience her work has been recognized with innovation and technology awards in six different countries uh, panel up has a great fun creating and transforming ideas into great products or businesses and working with teams to help connect people with purpose to find fulfillment every day so without much delay i'll i'll hand over uh, it to panel up over to you panel up lovely thank you so much kartik um okay so today we are going to talk through a couple of different concepts and how i have combined those together um to really try to to enable more successful processes and products so today i'm going to talk to you about um the concepts of design sprints and also prototyping so i'm going to um because we're we're doing this virtually i'm going to ask if you are comfortable to do so and it'd be great if you could if you could um come on um uh on video on a camera so i can see you nodding and agreeing and using your thumbs and um saying yes i i agree or no um i'm also going to ask you to use the chat um so we can say yes i've heard of this concept or no i haven't so i know um i can get a, a an understanding of who's in the room and um what we what we want to um uh you know what we where we want to take the discussion thank you um um shiv uh, for putting your camera on i can now see you thank you and a few others thank you so much um and um then also we may we may break into some um some smaller groups as we progress so um as um kartik said my name is penelope bar uh so i'm currently in melbourne it's a holiday in melbourne today and it's also my birthday so i feel privileged to be amongst you um today celebrating two occasions it's a um the holiday before the grand final for football my team is in it so i'm very happy to um to be sharing um this day with you so i don't really have thank you um i don't really have um much of an interest in the football today but um and i've also spent some nice time with my family this morning and my husband's currently cooking me a roast dinner so i'm as soon as i get off this i'll have a beautiful roast dinner to look forward to so i'm very happy um but you know one of the things that um i'm really interested in is being as effective as possible and as efficient as possible and you know as my husband quite often says there you go offering your unsolicited opinion again because i'm really interested in continuous improvement and so when i when i came across the idea of design sprints i loved design sprints so first i just wanted to understand how many people are familiar with design sprints so the google design sprint so um maybe if you can if you can note in the chat um if you are um, if you are familiar with not with um with design sprints just so i can i can get an understanding of um great so we've got a couple of people who are familiar not familiar familiar um so we've got sort of kind of half and half a few people haven't responded yet so i'm going to no okay great so i'm going to then take um kind of a uh, a beginner's um a level of of google design sprint if that's okay what about prototyping has anyone heard of or used prototyping not prototyping but prototyping so where are we on prototyping no 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 not heard of it okay brilliant well great so we have got some great learning to do together this afternoon so i hadn't heard of prototyping really until last year and i love i'm a lifelong learner so i was very excited to um learn of prototyping but when i as soon as i heard of it i thought great now that i i know a lot about design sprints and i can see a real use for it so today I'm I'm going to start sharing I'm going to work through some slides um because some of these concepts are um a better shared online but we're also going to do some 
some discussion. Um, now, Kartik, I'm just going to ask you, are people able to come off and share or or um, or not in this discussion? Or do they have to just use chat? No, they can they can talk if they want. Okay, beautiful. So um, so please feel free um, as we go along, because this is a workshop, um, please feel free um, as as we progress to come off your to come off mute and um, and discuss or add anything as we go along because um, you know how we all learn is by sharing. So for some you know you'll, you'll have experiences to share that you know that the rest of the group can learn on, learn from and that I also would love to hear about as well. So please feel free to do that. Beautiful. So I'm just going to share my screen. Um, here we go, and just pop it into present mode. Great. Okay, so um, yeah, so the title for me is if you if you buy it, we'll build it, and um, that's really the concept of prototype. So the whole the whole idea is that we don't want to do anything more than the most basic of things before we actually do any work. So we don't want, we don't want to start doing any discovery. We don't want to start doing any building before we really have got very, very strong buying signals that somebody wants something. So that's 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 the beginning, and then um, that we're going to today combine design design sprints and prototypes. So um, the outcome that you know I I strive for when I'm combining these things is that. Um, we want to understand how to place the right bets on the right ideas. And, you know, as most of you know, when you're um, dealing with any kind of process around ideation to execution, it's all a bet. So even if you've got, you know, um, even if you've done everything um, really well, you're still not always guaranteed to be successful with brilliant ideas. So we've all We've all had experiences, I'm sure, where um, you know we've we've got what we think is a brilliant idea. We've done everything right, and still, for whatever reason, for a range of reasons, we don't quite um, we're not quite as as successful as we want to be. So everything's a bit, and we also want to try and and you know shore up and give ourselves the best chance of becoming winning ideas based on data, not opinion. So that's one of the key things again around around design sprints, but also around prototyping. So we don't just want people saying, I think I would buy it, or I think that's a good idea. We want to, we want to get the data behind um, how people are going to act, how they're going to, um, you know, interact with these products and, and get some buying signals that, um, you know, they, how they, how they might um, make it a better decision, how, how they can um, help us, um, you know, Get to get to a better better decision and make a better bet. Okay, so um, this is the if anyone is familiar with um, design sprints, this is the design sprint map that um, that you know you, you would have seen. And basically, you're sort of working through a process of of kind of trying to understand through a range of techniques, which I'll go through in a minute. Um, then you're going to sort of ideate. Then you're going to decide, and then usually a prototype. This is here where we're going to prototype, and then you test. Um, so we're going to work through this end-to-end -end process today. But how you start is um, you start with the, the kind of challenge um, that you're thinking through. So the you know what how you kind of decide to come to a design sprint is because you've got a problem to solve. You've got a, a, an initiative or a project or a product that might be in trouble. You might want to be starting a new initiative. You've got a, a, a new product or a new problem that you want to solve. Um, and then you think, okay, this could be a good candidate for, for a design sprint. And we'll go and have a look at that again um, a bit later. And, oh, sorry, one of the key things um, is really preparing the design sprint team. And we're going to have a look at that as well. So um, we'll we'll work through this end-to-end um, -end approach as we go today. Um, so we're going to cover in um, who do you have to need to have in the room for a design sprint? 
we're going to look at, you know, what is designs, what is a design sprint and what is prototyping. That's why I asked at the beginning, you know, what's the level of knowledge. So I know how, how, um, where to start from there. Um, when to have a, when to use these different techniques and then how to run design sprints. So given, given most people said they're not really familiar, we'll go into some detail on that. Um, oh, sorry. These slides are moving. Oh, I don't know why. Um, um, and then um, we'll com and combining that with prototyping and we're going to have a problem around traffic congestion. So that's a problem that's ir irrespective of where you live. Everybody is familiar with the, with the problem of traffic congestion and especially now that we're, we're going um, back into, um, you know, uh, environments which don't have as much COVID um, in them, we're, we're starting to see traffic again, when to use these techniques, and then we'll sum up with some learnings. So I'm just going to pause and check if that sounds okay to everyone. Um, pop something in the, in the chat um, if there's something else that you would like to um, like to hear from. So we've got a thumbs up there. Um, okay. All right. Beautiful. Good. A couple of thumbs up. Thank you. Okay, so let's um let's just sort of pause and sort of think about a design sprint. So, you know, really design sprints help you get from kind of vague ideas and as I said here of what's wrong into concrete tests, concrete solutions to test ideas. So they're really a greatest hits of business strategy, innovation, behavior science design thinking, lean and agile methodology. So if you've got, you know, a couple of those, you can you can bring those skills to a design sprint. And it's really packaged up then into a battle-tested process that teams can then use to try and solve any, any challenge. Um, it's a research tool that gives, um, you know, the outcome of which is to give companies tangible results and helps them stop wasting time and resources in terms of building the wrong ideas. And it, it follows a step-by-step -step process, which is one of the reasons I like it, so people can learn along the way um, to sort of test and hopefully build products um, faster. It you, you might be familiar that it started in, in Google and then the, there's a design sprint book and also a course that you can do um, to follow along. Um, when it, when it first started, it was done. It was always done over five days. Um, there's now a now a process that that's usually done over four days. You can actually do it in. Usually, I do it in a couple of days because it's very hard to get um, all of the people in an organization for that time. I've also done just you know very um, very short design sprints over ninety minutes. If you just if you just pick out the real eyes, so you can, you can once you once you know how to do design sprints, you can. Um, make them work for you in terms of the key elements. But basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to validate um, the time and and um, the time between getting an idea, having an idea and then getting data um, to help you decide whether or not the idea is going to work or not. And that's really the essence of a design sprint. A prototype then is really enabling you to fail fast and fail cheap. So the key things around a prototype and are that you want to be able to um, test an idea with almost with zero dollars and in 24 hours. Um, and the, the key questions are, should I build it? Not can I build it? Um, and you're really asked after data, not opinion. So prototypes are really um, trying to enable you to, um, you know, circumvent that sort of real real error of going into some kind of, you know, full-blown business plan or full-blown blown product without really understanding what it is you're doing. And it, it's really trying to help you to um, test out any assumptions you might have. So Preto, um, Preto um, really comes from um, before, meaning before, and um, it, it really helps you um, decide that you're building the right it. So, sorry, I'm just 
lost my place for a sec. Um, yep. So um, the difference between um, prototyping and prototyping is that preto prototyping is much lighter and much quicker than prototyping. So prototyping is usually when you've got much more of an idea about the concept that might work and you might take a, a little bit, you might take more time to think through um, what the product features might be and you're probably closer to the product increment. Whereas prototyping, it's more, it's closer to kind of throwing things against the wall and seeing what's going to stick. So we're going to look at some um, different kinds of prototypes as we progress through, but it's much more, um, it's much more about, you know, what, what, how can you quickly get an understanding um, of what, you know, what might, um, what, what might work. It's sort of like pretend prototyping. So the, the emphasis is on, on low fidelity mock-ups, um, you're trying to um, use it to see a user's problem and you're trying to get that feedback as quickly as possible. Actually, I'm just going to come off um, and just see if there's any questions there because I can't see the chat coming through. So I'm just going to see, are there any questions so far? because I can see a couple of things in chat. Um, okay, so someone just said, what's the main difference between prototyping and prototyping? Um, so, yeah, one of the main differences, as I just said, is the, um, the, the difference in terms of the, how close you are to, um, to a product increment. Um, how is MVP different? Well, a, an MVP is basically your product um, at, at its, um, it's basically the, the minimum features of your product. So your product, it should look and feel almost like your, your product um, and your product um, might have some additional features that are, that are added to it as it goes along, but it's basically your product as you'd like it to, like it to be when it's fully released. Um, yes, yeah, so yeah, you're right. Sometimes prototyping is also called pretend prototyping, correct. Okay, all right. So um, when a prototype is needed, when is a prototype needed to be started and completed? Um, so we'll get into that as we as we progress, if we can we can um, hold that question. Okay, all right. So I'm I'll go back and share. I just wanted to check in and and um, make sure I, I, I for some reason I can't see the chat. Um, coming through when I've, I'm sharing. So I will, um, I'll just go back and share my slides if that's okay. There are no other questions. Okay. All right. So, um, so one of the key um, things to think through is that um, when you're running, I'm going to I'm going to talk now for a little bit specifically around design sprints. So one of the things we talked about um, we we established at the beginning is that um, the, the most people, I think there are a couple of people who had who had done design sprints or heard, heard had heard of design sprints, um, but most people hadn't. So we will we will go back. Um, we will spend a bit of time. Um, on design sprints. Um, so one of the things that, one of the reasons design sprints were um, created was to bring people together to work together um, on key ideas, but to work in a specific way. So the principles are outlined here. And the first principle is around working together, but working alone. So what that means is that during the design sprint process, there's quite a bit of time when you you um, you do your own sketching and you do your own thinking, um, but then we come back together and we share that. So we do that so that we 
don't bias each other in our ideas or our um, our um, rationale for thinking through our responses to a product, and we come we come together to to think that through. Um, the second principle is around getting started versus being right. So you know, again, we've all had um, circumstances where we tie ourselves up in knots thinking, oh gosh, you know, these, these things become too big and really around design sprints are everything is really time bound and everything's really fast. And the idea is that we just really want to get something down on paper and we want to get something just started knowing that we can iterate so that we can, we can kind of get our ideas out and then we'll build on those. Um, tangible things over discussion. So, you know, we've all been in meetings, we've all done product work, we've all done process work where we've had wonderful discussions, but then we've we said, oh gosh, now now what do we do? And then we've we've realized that we've taken all of our time just in discussion. So the the design sprint is very structured and we take the time to um to write and draw and capture in a very structured way. So in a moment, I'm going to walk you through the design sprint structure and you'll see that. And we don't rely on creativity. So one of the, one of the barriers that holds each of us, uh, each of us back is that, you know, people think that they're um, either not creative or they're not as creative as somebody else. And so they put barriers up um, when trying to think through a problem and the design sprint is a system that helps you work through um, any of those biases that you might have um, and enables you to um, decide that you don't have to rely on creativity as the key tool to get you there. The system will actually enable you to do that. So that's what we do there. Okay. So um, Alberto Savoia, he he um, came out of um, was a Google innovation um, uh, that one of the key people in Google, and he he actually was the um, inventor of prototypes, but also did a lot of um, work around design sprints as well. But he um, the reason I call him out is because he does a lot of work around product maths, around new ideas. But you know one of the one of the, the things that's really important that he champions is that even if everything goes really well, even if things are perfectly executed, we still have 80% of new products that fail. And that's what, something that's really important to hang on to. Okay. So um, one of the, one of the really important things is, um, uh, is the, the system of the design sprint. So um I walked through before the design sprint map and um, I know it's really, it's going to be hard to see on this one, one slide, but I'm just going to describe it to you and then we're going to go through it in detail. But basically, um, sorry, I don't know what is happening with my slides. I must be leaning on the wrong thing. Basically um, what happens is that we have a process where before the design sprint happens, um, you need to do quite. You need to do a bit of work to make sure that the key stakeholders are available within your design sprint to to, to participate in the design sprint. So, as I mentioned, um, when the design sprint was first conceived, it was conceived as a five day event, which um, you know, as we all know allocating five days for anything is really difficult. And especially if you're wanting to bring in key stakeholders, that's really difficult. Um, and having to get, uh, you know, everyone that, everyone that you need um, together for a, a, a dedicated amount of time is pretty tough. And so, as I mentioned, now what I do is I either compress the time into a couple of days or I have um, so three mornings where um, I bring people together or I have a couple of sessions where I bring the keys, like everybody plus the key stakeholders and then the rest of the team 
across um, the rest of the days. So basically what you're doing is before the session, you're, you, you've obviously determined that a design sprint is going to be the, um, the key idea that you're going to, the, the key um, technique that you're going to use. So I'm going just going to the, go to the next slide first. And these are the kinds of um, questions that you might ask to determine whether or not a design sprint is going to be appropriate for your challenge. So you might determine whether or not you've got a high uh, a customer problem. And that's that's a good thing to be using for a design sprint because you can bring either bring some customers or you can bring um, some customer feedback or you can bring some external information to discuss. Um, solving a high risk challenge. So it's something that's weighty, weighty enough and it's something that's big enough to solve. If you want to offer something new to market, that's also a good thing. Um, if you're wanting to source new customers, uh, if you want to decide, to decide between product options, when you're looking for alignment and buy-in. So if you've got some people internally where you're thinking, actually, um, we actually need to bring people on board. That could be a good thing. And then also at the inception of a, a product or at a crisis point. And then you need to be determining whether or not the problem is big enough and worth solving. Um, if it's worth bringing a group of people together. So is this something you could actually just do yourself or is it something you could do with a smaller team? Do you actually need to bring a group of people together? And if you were able to do, if you're going to do this initiative, how much would it cost if it goes wrong? So that's another another key consideration. So they're the they're the key um, the key things um, in terms of I mentioned team roles. In terms of the key people that you need, you need to have somebody who's going to act in the role of facilitator. So somebody who's going to keep the system of the design sprint going. Who's going to keep all of the times going, and they need to be really um, key on the, the times, somebody who's the decider. So this is usually your primary stakeholder. So the decider for this is if you were doing this, making this product, making the key decisions, and you, you made your decisions within the sprint, and then you took them outside of the design sprint, and this person said, no, that's not going to work, and we're not going to do that. That's the person you need inside the, the design sprint who needs to be the, in the role of the decider because you need their agreement within the within the design sprint. You also need experts. So you need, um, so if we're, if we're talking about the problem of traffic congestion, we would want to have internal and expert and, and external experts um, who have some expertise around traffic congestion. Um, you'd want some, you want diverse team members. Um, you want key internal and external stakeholders. And then, um, a group of other people with knowledge and skills, and especially you need people who might block or disagree with the outcome of the design sprint. So, you know, anyone who, um, if you're, if everybody in the design sprint decides on a course of action, and again, you take it out and then it gets you thinking, oh, actually this group or this person who's really influential is going to block it. That's the kind of person that you need to get to, to come to the design sprint. Okay, so if we just go back to um, the design sprint map. So um, basically this is a, um, a design sprint that's um, laid out on Miro. So this is what I usually use um, in Miro. And I was going to use it in this workshop, but I didn't know if everyone had access to Miro. Um, and that usually takes a little bit of time to set up. But basically, um, this outlines the agenda, um, who the key people are in terms of the team, what their roles are, their experts, the experts. It also has space for the long-term goal, the um, how might we, so the how might we questions. Um, it then outlines the map and the target, which we're going to go through in a minute. It has space for the sketches and the different types of sketches. It then has space for your um, storyboards, has space for your pr prototypes or prototypes. It then has space for um, areas for testing, 
a scorecard and also um, a retro. So um, that's that's what I always have set up for running my um, design sprints virtually because that's what I've been doing for the last couple of years. So um, I would encourage you if you're going to be doing design sprints to do something similar, to have um, either, you know, unique because you need to set this kind of thing up um, beforehand because if when you're running these design sprints, you don't have time during the design sprint to set these things up um, within the design sprint. So I'm just going to come off um, again and just check any questions be because we're actually going to then go into doing a little bit of work in a design sprint. Okay. Um, so are uh, there any other questions so yeah. far? Yep. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to understand. I mean, uh, do we do this thing, right? Or do we run sprints to run the hypothesis testing? Every time we have a hypothesis, whether, you know, this will work or this will not work. So do we do that for each and everything that, you know, whether this will work, so let us run a sprint. Um, I wouldn't do it for everything because it's a lot of work. So I would, I would um, have a kind of, um, uh, a criteria for assessment as to whether or not you would you would run a, a design sprint. That's why I had the questions in there. You've got to be able to assess if the problem is big enough, if um, if it's worth bringing a whole lot of people together, if it's something you can just solve. So you've got to have your own criteria to say um, if you need to bring all these people together. The actual techniques you can do yourself anyway, you can or you can do as a small team. I've I've done these as a small team. And I've done them just with with a small small group of people, and you can bring some of these techniques out. But to bring like to to do the whole spirit of the design sprint with bringing, you know, a diverse set of people, it's a big investment in terms of the preparation, the running of it, and then the you know the collation of it in terms of the design sprint report, etc. So you need to be making sure that it's it's the right the right problem that you're working through yeah should i ask one more question because uh, yeah, sure. we have short of we are short of time yeah that's where okay no, uh, yeah yeah so does it work for software implementation because software implementation itself takes immense amount of time so does it work for software implementation that we are creating a prototype we are also testing it with a group of people in just a matter of few days yeah, I mean, so it wouldn't work. I mean, this is this how it would work with software implementation is you would have done a design sprint before you're you're creating something from a software perspective because where you use a design sprint is in um, like at a conceptual level. So if you're if you're trying trying to create a product or if if the um, whatever you're creating from a software perspective has really gone awry, then you might want to bring it back to a design sprint and say, okay, where have we gone wrong? But you, from an implementation point of view, you wouldn't be using a design sprint because this is, um, this is not a standard testing process. This is a, you know, an ideation and testing process. So you're trying to, you're trying to, you know, think through, if you know if this then that kind of approach with design sprints so and that's that's one of the reasons why you bring a diverse group of people together so you've got you know so if if it, so as i'm talking about we're saying we've got a, our problem is we want to solve traffic congestion so usually you bring you bring a you bring a big problem like that so we wouldn't be saying okay um so we start with something big and we know that that's big um, but part of the part of the um, process of the design sprint is we need to get it to something smaller that we can then actually test, um, and then we can we can potentially create a product for that. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, so I've got a question here: Will we be managing the same ticket if we've got the request for design change? 
Um, I'm not sure if I understand that question. Does someone, do, whoever wrote that in, do you want to, um, oh, Shali Rajput, would you like to explain that a little bit more? Sure. Um, so question is like when we are managing this design sprint and we are getting some some of the feedbacks, right? Uh, we'll get that reviewed by our um, stakeholders. And if they have given you some um, sort of design change and which is like uh, not just 20 or 30 percent of design change, but I'll say 50 percent of design change, will we be managing the same ticket or should we create a new ticket as a change request like like we do for the developments? Um, yeah, so it, you wouldn't be having design tickets for this because it's it's not this whole process should be should be started and ended within a couple of days. Mm -hmm. So um, and out of this process, you might then agree what's next. So um, you you might then say, okay, now based on what we learned in the design sprint. We might then we might then decide to incorporate um, some of these um, product features into our product, but it um, yeah you you might then you you could you could um, create some design changes based on based on this, but it wouldn't be I, I, you wouldn't automatically. Um, make those changes I wouldn't think within the within that the, the space of this change because it this you want this to be really quite quick okay. um yeah and then you want to say okay based on the report at, which uh -huh. is what what you want to produce at the end then you say okay based on based on what we started with based on what our objective was based on our problem what we found in terms of the solution then um then this is what we want to do next. Okay. Go yeah. On. Okay. Um, anything else? Nope, I'm good. No. Okay. Any anyone else? No. Okay. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start us off on doing a design sprint. So. Um, I'm going to imagine that we're a team. So all of us have been called together as a team. So we are team, um, team, um, challenge, challenge makers. And we have got, we've been asked to, um, solve the problem of traffic congestion. So, um, we have come, we've decided that this is a big enough problem to try to solve. So we are doing a design sprint with prototyping as well. So for the rest of the session today, we're going to be having that in our mind and we're going to try and use some of our techniques. So what I'm first going to do is then I'm going to be, ah, oh, I found why my slides were moving because I had my keyboard under my papers so that won't happen again sorry about that um so first um what's going to happen is um I am going to are you sharing the screen no 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 I'm not I'm not sharing the screen okay now. no not at the moment um we don't need to share the screen you just need to listen now um and have each of you got a pen or you can you can type some um questions for yourself yep couple of couple of thumbs up great because what we're going to do now is we're going to look we're going to learn the first technique of the design sprint which is around writing how might we questions so how might we are um reframing a question of reframing a problem so has anyone used how might we before has anyone used how might we in terms of um 
um, design thinking or any other techniques. So sometimes, yeah, in design thinking, yeah, great. So, yeah, so quite, quite often they're used to sort of reframe a question. So they're called HMWs. So what we might, um, what, we, what we are going to do is I'm going to now pretend that I'm the um, traffic congestion, traffic jam expert, and I'm just going to read a couple of paragraphs to you. And as I'm reading, I'd like you to um, write some things that you hear as problems as reframe those as how might we questions. So um, just have a go at doing that. So if I'm saying something like um, the most common form of traffic jam occurs when the number of cars is more than the roadway can support, you can you can make a how might we as how might we um, change the the number of cars on the roadway. Does everybody understand what we're doing? So I'm going to read a couple of things as a traffic expert, and I'd like you to change those statements into some um, how might we questions. So this is the first technique we're going to use for the design sprint. Okay. So I'm going to start, I'll just, I'll just read a couple of paragraphs and then I'll ask a couple of people if they can share their how might we's. Okay. So I'm going to start and I'm going to read about a couple of, a couple of things. All right. So <clears throat> I am the expert here and I'm going to start. So we see a lot of um, cars on the road every day. However, to say that cars are the only things that cause traffic congestion is not wise. There are three factors causing traffic jams, saturation, construction, and accidents. Saturation. The most common form of traffic jam occurs when the number of cars is more than the roadway can, can support. This is known as saturation which is a recurring problem in our daily lives. It makes up about half of all the traffic that Australians experience on a daily basis. Saturation is most likely to happen when the population of a city grows faster than its infrastructure. I'll just read one paragraph. Okay, great. So someone's, someone's got one, how might we? We've got a couple of how might we's in there. Okay, how might we? So how might we limit the construction of building? How might we increase the size of roads? How might we control the saturation based on time? Beautiful. Okay. So if there was a, um, if I continued reading, how might we be able to reduce the number of cars? Beautiful. So we would, we would um, have many, many um, how might we's that would come out of um, what the expert and you might have more than one expert, what the expert would say. So we would continue to do that, which is great. So that's that's with how might we is, we're looking for um, positive, um, positive responses. So we're looking for, um, we're putting our positive spin on how might we solve the problems. So, um, and we usually um, sort of listen to the, the um, expert for about 15 to 30 minutes. And then we usually would take um, sort of about 30 minutes to try to um, work through this problem. And then the facilitator usually groups um, these categories into sort of three to five categories, and then we would vote on those. So we've got a few more here um, that you can read as well in terms of how might we forecast the population growth and improve infrastructure how might we restrict heavy weight and slow moving vehicles in those streets? Great. So if we were doing this together, we would have um, a couple of categories here in terms of construction, size of roads, 
um, reduction of um, number of cars and some forecasting. So we would have, we probably have, we'd be able to make about five categories. Okay, so that's our how might we use. So um, the next thing we would do based on what the um, what the um, experts had done is we would then um, have what's called sprint questions. So the sprint questions are then thinking about the negative responses to what we've heard. So what we what we're doing with a sprint question is we're trying to think through any blockers, so anything that might stop us from achieving um, our objective. Um, and we write these questions as can we. So um, we might, if we if we look at here about, um, you know, how might we increase the size of the road, et cetera, we might say, you know, can we increase the size of the road? Um, can we um, educate drivers better to reduce accidents? Can we um, uh, re can we um, build the roads um, better to <coughs> withstand heavier weighted vehicles, etc.? So we're trying to we're trying to mitigate any of the problems that we're trying to have. And so what we're trying what we do then is we select, a couple of those problems that we want to <coughs> that we want to really focus on so that they can become important considerations for us as we move for, move through our design sprint <coughs> oh, so one question one yeah question. sure right so oh, these are there are two things that uh, what i could understand one is HMW. Yep. HMW is all about focusing on what are the problems that we are facing. Okay, so that's uh, the, the core. Um, the core idea of HMW is to identify the right problem statement. Correct. While that, we are that. also telling, yeah, while we are also telling, right, we should also look at solutions simultaneously by asking questions. Can we? Okay, can we type of questions? So is it like we are, you know? having dealing with questions and answers together uh, simultaneously yeah we don't really want to try to get not really not really um solutions but that we're just trying to get the positive and the negative so um we're trying to get the can yeah the can we is more um it's try it's it's moving towards it's moving into the solution right realm but it's not it's not completely solutions but we're trying to we're trying to think closer to that. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so well, that's that's something that you do as a first step, right? We also try to identify the problems, and we also try to identify what could be the solution. Well, we're not they're not quite solutions though. So they're just saying that they're, they're still trying. There's they're still trying to be um, teasing out the problem because at this stage we're still we're still trying to tease out the problem. Because we we get closer, to, we get into the solution in a little bit further. It depends on it, how long we're taking, but we're we're not trying to close anything down. We're just trying to still keep our minds open to um, what can what could we do? Because at the moment, you know, we if we've got if we've got an expert there who's who's talking to us, we're just sort of saying, oh well, you know, could we? Can we do this? Can we do that? Etc. So. Um, yeah, we're trying to we're trying to um, just think through what might be possible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, one uh, one last question is like, yeah. let's say I have four HMW questions. Okay, one, two, three, four. Yeah. For each HMW question, should we have can we questions? Or no, or no, no. You don't have to. You don't have to. Not no, no, no. That mapping. Is no, you not don't required. have to relate them. No, no, no. Okay. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yes. All right. So, um, any more questions before I? I'm just gonna because I'm gonna go back to the slides. Anything else? No. Okay. All right. Well, let me just um go back here. 
Okay. All right. So um, let me just, yeah. So we've just talked about that. We talked about that. So basically then if we've got the how might we's and we've got the sprint questions, what we want them want to be thinking through is the vision. So we want to be thinking through um, our long-term goal. So this doesn't have to be, um, this is not something that we would never revisit, but it's something that we want to be saying, okay, so just at a high level, now that we've, we've sort of started to identify um, where we're sitting, um, where we've got some knowledge, um, in two years' time, you know, where might we be? So in two years' time, um, we, um, you know, we might have halved accidents on the road because we've um, introduced something. We've we've better educated drivers about, um, you know, the way they drive or we've um, controlled for X, Y, Z or whatever it is, depending on whatever, whatever the, um, the problems are. So um, we would write a vision based on um, what we've what we've determined the problems to be to date. So that's that would be the next step that we would take, writing our vision, um, the spring questions as we talked about. And then what we want to do is we want to make sure, and this is where we we're um, wanting to align, you know, before I mentioned that we want to move into data rather than opinion. We want to make sure that we're working from um, what's happening at the moment and then um, working to what we want to be, where we want to be. So we we work to a map. And so what we want to understand is um, what's currently happening in um, the current system that we're trying to change. So if we, if we think about traffic congestion, you know, there's a there's a lot that's happening there. So we, we, we would be wanting to understand what's happening. So this is where we would come back to the how might we areas and we would, we would um, align those with these key, these key concepts here around discover, learn and use. So we would go back and have a look at the how might we's that you came up with and we would say, okay, um, we would place a couple of them under discover, a couple of them under learn and a couple of them under use. And then we would work from those. And based on that, we would then discuss together um, <coughs> where we think the, the biggest problems are likely to be. And we would vote on that basis um, in terms of what is our target going to be? Because we can't solve everything in a design sprint, but there would be a couple of areas that are going to come out as the most important thing in it in um you know, in terms of traffic congestion or in terms of any problem. So, you know, it doesn't mean that the other ideas and the other problems, the other suggestions, the other how might we get thrown away, but it just means for the purposes of this discussion, we're going to focus on these couple of things. So that's how we, we build our map. And then um, we've, so at the end of that, that section, and that is usually at the end of that day, um we've what what we've come to is we've got basically um a <clears throat> problem which has been reframed in terms of our how might we and our um sprint questions we've got a long term vision and then we've got a map of what our existing system is and then we've got a target in terms of of you know what we want um to target in terms of our current problem and so then the ID8 really brings us into getting us closer to um, what we're potentially going to solve. So one of the key things in this section is we want to be able to show, not tell. 
So before the, usually before the, the design sprint, quite often the facilitator and usually other people have done some external research in terms of um, potential areas of interest. And we bring that in terms of a sort of some lightning demos or some um, show and tells about, you know, what's already in the marketplace um, that is similar or um, has some of the attributes that we're interested in. And so we spend some time working through. So if we're thinking about traffic congestion, we might we might um, have already come into this session with some um, global examples of what people do in other countries in terms of how they manage traffic congestion. Or um, if we're thinking about from an Indian context, we might talk about you know different um, different states and how they manage traffic congestion. And we might talk about you know, traffic congestion in terms of different types of vehicles and how that's managed or different aspects of traffic congestion. So we would we would talk about that in this this session. And then what we're what we're doing is we want to be able to sketch. And so this is this is the key component of working um, together but working alone. So in this section of the design sprint, this is where we First, we spend some time either writing or drawing and we collate all of the work that we've done first in terms of the high level, how might we use the sprint goals, the design sprint, uh, sorry, the um, design, the two-year vision, and we, we get really clear on what those things are. And then um, we collate the lightning, the lightning demo um, examples and the elements that we liked from those. And then we might sketch. And so we'll, we might sketch in a range of different ways. Um, and people get can get um, sort of nervous about, about this. Um, there's a concept called crazy eights. I actually usually do just do crazy fours because um, I find that you don't get much more than four ideas. Um, and so that's really just sort of sketching four different kinds of ideas that you might have um, for your for what a solution might be, and then um, you know creating different kinds of solutions. And then the idea behind this is that you you individually create a, a sketch and then you show it to each other, and so that you can you can share your concepts, but you can also build on those concepts for each other. And you can take different components of um, each other's concepts and then you can decide and vote on which concept might be of most interest. And then based on that, then you can create a user flow and a storyboard of something that you might like to take to, um, to a testing environment in terms of prototyping. So um, you can see how this builds in terms of you've had a problem, you've had a you've had some external or some, um, some expertise that's come and um, you know taken the problem to a different level for you. You've looked at it in terms of you know some questioning in terms of how might we. You've looked at it in terms of some possibility in terms of could we. You've then thought about it in terms of some visioning, um, in terms of your long term vision. You've then um, had a look at it in terms of external externally. Um, some external positioning in terms of the two-year vision and the um, lightning demos. And then you've done some sketching in terms of what it might look like in terms of the solution. Um, and then you've looked at it in terms of the user flows and the storyboard in terms of the overall map and the target and brought those in with the features. And so now you've got a flow and a storyboard that you're ready to say, okay, this is what it could be. And so this is where, to answer the question from right before, this is where prototyping comes in. Okay, so now we get to prototyping. But again, I'm just before we just before we start here, um, I can see we've got one question in the chat, which is, oh, so how might we number of cars? Okay, are there any other questions from a um, that we want to before we just get right into prototyping that we want to ask at this stage? No. Okay. 
So there are a range of techniques um, for prototyping which are outlined here. Um, so I'm just going to let you take a couple of minutes to um, read those through and then um, I will come, I'll, I'll just get you to read those and then we'll come back together. So just take a, take a minute or so to read them and then I'll give you an example of each of them. Okay, so um, does anyone have any, before I start with examples, does anyone have any particular questions about any of these prototyping techniques? Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm still not very much clear, like, you know, what's the difference between prototype and prototype. I'm also confused with MVP because all I understand by reading these techniques, these are, you know, different types of MVPs. Yeah. Okay. So prototype is really light um, and it's no money. It's really quick. And the, the, con the whole concept of a prototype is you do it for $0.00. And you, it's something that you should be able to be to test within 24 hours. Okay. So a proto a prototype, um, most people wouldn't wouldn't do a prototype within within with that kind of money or that kind of time. So a prototype is usually testing, um, you know, at least one feature, and has usually been is usually um, takes a little bit more time than that, and is usually a bit more um, structured um, uh, and uh, has a little bit more rigor around it. Um, it's also, so prototype is very much uh, um, conceptual and you, you, you do, we're doing it at this stage because we don't really know, whereas prototype is um, you, you've got a bit more of an idea about, about something. Um, mm -hmm. And an MVP, as we're, I mean, even though the MVP is, is one of the things here as well, it's not the same level. Um, an MVP, when if you're really doing an MVP, it is pretty much what it's it's basically your product. It's just the minimum level of your product. So if you're producing a traffic congestion response, it's pretty much what your response would be, but it's it probably doesn't have all of the features. It's just the the minimum minimum level of that. So if you were doing a um, a traffic traffic congestion report or a traffic congestion um, uh, policy, so if India decided to you know reduce its traffic congestion and said okay, only um, you know people with odd numbers of number plates are now available, I can only go on um, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Maybe they say okay, let's just test it in one city now and that's the mvp before they roll it out to the whole country okay. or they're just, just in one town one town because that's the mvp but it's it's not saying we'll just test it on we'll just you know do a, a kind of that's that's the product it's going to be okay. number plates they're just doing it in a different way yep okay thanks okay so um i'm just going to give you a quick example uh Oh, uh, hey, I have yeah. a question. Uh, what's yeah, the sure. uh, what's the difference between one night stand technique and provincial technique? Yeah, so um, provincial is um, so in the example I just used um, for the traffic congestion, if you were testing it in one, if you're testing that traffic um, congestion in one one city or one area, um, and you're testing something locally, that's that's provincial. So you're testing it in a small area. And one night stand is just limited in terms of um, time. So you might you might say, um, 
we're doing this test for one one week only. Uh, usually it's that's a dollar value. One night stand is a dollar value. But it, it could be a limited time time as well. So limited time only usually refers to um, you know, this this amount of you can get this special if you hurry now or um, if you act now, you'll get this this better deal. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so we've talked about a couple of them. Um, so fake door is um, yeah, so something that's not not there at the moment. So um, you know, would would someone would someone take up a product um, which is not currently available? So. Um, you know how you can do you can do that is that um, you can just kind of pretend that something's something's available and um, and you know set up a set up a website that gets them to register their interest or that sort of thing and then say to them okay we'll put you on a wait list or we'll we'll let you know etc. Um, a facade so. Um, this is where, um, yeah, again, it's fairly similar where you've got buy buttons where you're wanting to get um, people to understand scalability. So an example of that is um, like in the, in the 90s when they're first working out if people would buy cars online, they did a Cars Direct website that had a buy button and um, somebody sold, the guy who did it first, sold some cars on the weekend to prove that it was going to work. Um, he lost a whole lot of money, but he proved the concept. Um, Pinocchio, this is a, a non-operational version of something. So um, Jeff Hawkins, who did the first Palm Pilot, he did his first version of the Palm Pilot was a wooden Palm Pilot. And so he he carried that around with, and he used, instead of a stylus, he had a chopstick and he used that um, for ages, getting a whole lot of feedback on whether or not people would use a Palm Pilot before he actually built one um, quite a few years later. Um, a Mechanical Turk, so IBM famously used um, a Mechanical Turk in terms of the speech-to-text computer, and the key thing that they, they learned with the objections that people had were privacy, but also that they thought people thought that their throats would get tired um, in terms of using that. Um, uh, in terms of um, MVP, so the first iPhone um, didn't support cut and paste and it only um, had a few notifications. So um, they put it out anyway because, um, and then they added things later. Um, one night stand. So, you know, everyone would know the Airbnb story. That was a, an example of a one night stand where they had a, a quick offer of um, an air mattress, a breakfast for $80 a night. And they were really surprised when three people signed up um, on the first night. And then now it's worth $10 billion. Um, Pinocchio. Um, oh, we've talked about Pinocchio. Um, provincial, um, we've talked about that, but, um, and YouTube. So, um, I mean, Google Glass was an example of YouTube where people um, uh, had the opportunity to, to sign up and pay for that um, before um, Google produced it and they were able to really gauge the initial level of interest for, for Google Glass. So yeah, so they're good techniques to um, to produce um, before you determine whether or not you should you should actually build a product. Okay, so uh, one, um, one question here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just uh, wanted to understand right when when uh, let's say Steve Jobs or uh, the entire team, Apple team, this uh, you know came up with the iPhone, and Steve Jobs had commented, if if I actually create a product and if I start validating it in, into the market, um, it will be difficult for a product to come out because people themselves don't know what they want. Okay, yes. that, that was a statement, yeah. So, right, yep. all he said is like, you know, people have uncertain behavior. So 
how do we actually so is it really a rational wherein we can validate or it's it's like you know a case like uh, you know we cannot validate what's it like who is right in this case we have a lot of prototype techniques but you know there are you know market leaders who are talking about it in in a different way yeah i mean basically he he would be the i would imagine he would be the same that you just you need to um run a range of tests and i guess that's why i reference alberto savoya in the beginning that you know you basically even if everything's going right still 80% of products will fail so um yeah you know um with the palm pilot example um you know jeff um hawkins he he carried that wooden palm pilot around for two or three years in different iterations testing that with different people and got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people's um uh feedback before he actually produced anything that was mechanized because he just was trying to get the people to understand and give him give him commentary on the usability and utility um of that so um yeah i think that that it's probably a combination because i i and it probably depends on um the the type of disruption that you're going for so the palm pilot was was in that category and the same as uh, you know the the iphone um mm-hmm. yeah so I, th- i think it's it's probably a similar thing that you kind of just some you know you you've got to bre- you know we all know that there's things that have been brought onto the market um which have similar potential um changing life changing um properties as the iphone that haven't taken as well um and so you know for every everything that's um that's taken in terms of the iphone there's there's a whole um uh there's you know there's there's things that happen so i think it's it's a case of you know keep trying yeah okay okay thanks yeah <laughs> okay um all right so when we when we're doing prototyping um sorry did did anyone else have an, another question oh that's it that's it no okay great um so we also we then also use um generally we use a, a lean canvas so i'm sure most of you have used lean canvases before um and so we use a lean canvas to basically then work through um before we so that so that we can choose which of these techniques um we would most effectively use with our problems so i've prepared a a link canvas so i'm just going to go to can you see that now yes yeah. yeah okay perfect sorry i had done two versions and this is so um basically when you're doing a link canvas for prototyping you um you don't need to include the cost structure and the revenue um because you're not at the point where you need to worry about those. So if I was doing a lean canvas for um traffic congestion, I've I've prepared one here. Um so I've said here that um you know the problem is traffic congestion is a universal problem and it contributes to air pollution, adds travel time and increases accidents. And my solution um based on the design sprint that I did in my head um with myself um was a private location location based car sharing solution so you know i would pick up my neighbor my neighbor would pick up me we work in the same building etc um my key metrics would be the number of inquiries or people who indicate interest in car sharing my uvp would be to have my have the travel costs my unfair advantage is to partner with large corporates and partner with city car parks to advertise a service the channels would be social media car parks workplaces internal email news or news media and customer segments are office workers and schools and then you use a process so that you have the idea 
you um, through a link canvas capture and clarify idea assumptions. You've got to, you want to um, get a key market hypothesis. So determine the overall hypothesis to validate. You've got an X, Y, Z hypothesis. So you set the metrics against the market hypothesis. You've got a hyper zoom. So you really want to zoom in the hypothesis to target a key um, customer segment. And then you want to experiment. So you design, run and, and revise the experiments. And then you want to get a decision. So um, that, that you can really compare the results with the success metrics and decide your next action. So for me, if I've run my experiment and I've, I've um, undertaken my, based on my lean, lean canvas, I've said that people will share their cars and drive and driving to save money, time in the environment. I've hypothesized that 20% of my organization will, work, will inquire about car sharing. And on the day that I run car sharing, 10% fewer cars are observed in the car park. Um, I think that 2% of people adopt car sh sharing if they, if they save money, 2% if they can sa save time, and 1% if it helps the environment. Um, I intend to run fake door and mechanical Turk um, experiments. And the decision is if 5% of inquiries do a car share and confirm that they've saved dollars, um, time or environment savings, then I would go ahead. So that's the process um, that you go through to confirm that your prototypes have um, have actually got you where you need to go. So there's a there's a couple of you know templates that you need there in terms of the the lean canvas that needs to be completed, and then this process, um, which you, you you can pick up from the slides, um, to basically run run your prototypes. So it's not like you just set off your set your prototypes um, out into the the ether and hope that they work. But basically, you you need to run them, even though you're running them in a you know an expedited time with no money. You still need to control them so that you actually get you know you know you get some meaningful um, outcomes from them. So basically, you're really wanting to kind of undertake a process where you're running your prototypes, you're getting your customer feedback, you're then collating your your scorecards at the end, and then the overall approach that you're wanting to take then is developing a sprint report and conducting a retro with, as you do with, with everything. So um, that's pretty much the, the um, design sprint process, which when you, when you have a look at the slides um, after this session, you will see that that's mapped out in that, um, the five stage um, approach that I've provided. Um, so I just wanted to see if there are any final questions in our last couple of minutes, because what we've done today is we've taken a look at design sprints and prototypes. We looked at sort of when, why, and how to run design sprints. We've looked at some prototyping techniques, and then we've looked at um, combining design sprints with prototyping. So I just wanted to um, then sort of say thank you and leave you with my details. Um, and yeah, I've written, written, just recently written a book, um, on experiment driven transformation, and I'm writing a new one on innovation. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to take any questions that you've got, um, now. Um, yeah, I have, right. It's, it's again me. I have one, yeah, one sure. more question. Okay. Yeah. See, see, right, when when we started with this entire sprint exercise, we saw, you know, the first step is about mapping yeah. okay, to the maps. And in maps, we said that, you know, we need to write down each and every step of a current process and we need to tie HMW with that current current uh, set of processes, right? Right. Out of those, let's say uh, we identify that uh, the current process is five step process. Okay. And we also write HMW. Okay. And we are trying to tie HMW with the current step process. Correct. That, that's what we no, discussed. No, the, the how might we um, are linked to the expert interviews. So the overall map. Mm -hmm. So if I, I'm just going to take you back to yeah. let me share the screen again. 
because um, I think you, so let me just go back. Um, okay. So can you see this is the overall sprint map? Correct. And um, so there's a there's a couple of maps so that the, yeah sorry the overall process is called a sprint map but mm -hmm. within here as well there is a um, map of the process yeah map of the process I'm talking about yeah yeah map of, map of the process yeah so that's 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 part of this and okay. within within this first section which can either be a day or it can be you know your first chunk of so I don't I like it used to be that these were each days but so we'll say a day for just for ease of explaining it so within the first day you're trying to really understand the problem mm -hmm. and and sort of ideate on the problem and so what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to um you're wanting to um, hear from the the experts. So mm -hmm. you want to um, hear usually from an internal expert and an external expert about why this is a problem and why people should be listening to it. And you're wanting to listen to that critically with how might we? So that's reframing the problem in terms of how might we? And then you're also wanting to listen to it um, in terms of, you know, then from possibility in terms of can we's and then you're wanting to reframe those both in terms of like you know then what could it be so the long-term vision so they're the three things in terms of saying okay based on the external view um of the problem what what could happen and then the the map that so that's the the three components and then what you do with the how might we's is um, because usually you've got quite a few people in this, you'll get some similar ideas. So you you do some affinity mapping, but you also do some categorization. So there'll be some things that come up that are, are similar. So one of the jobs of the facilitator is you want to ba basically kind of create about five categories and you mm -hmm. say, okay, this is category one ideas, category two, three, four, five. And so you kind of want to put all of the different ideas under those different categories and so, and you do the same with the sprint questions. So you're not trying to, you can't, because you can't deal with too much stuff. And so you, you mm -hmm. basically categorize those things. And then you say, okay, now we want to understand what's currently happening. So what's currently happening in terms of traffic congestion. So mm -hmm. we want to, we want to map what's happening. So we want to say, okay, currently in India, what's happening is in terms of problems, we've got, People leave their house, then they get on a bus and it's crowded and then they get to work and they work all day and then they try to go home and it's crowded and they get home really late because it's so crowded and or they get on, you know, they get on the train, it's crowded, they get on the, the road, it's crowded, they get in a cyclo, it's crowded, they get on a bicycle, it's crowded, you know, and the, the environment is terrible, the roads are cracking, et cetera, et cetera. So we want to we wanna map everything that's happening and then we say okay that's the map of the current system and so well, then we say okay within the current system what are the key problems there um, that we want to focus on and then looking back at um, the long-term vision and and the categories of how might we use in the sprint questions which can um, which can um, uh, kind of align a little with those, we can say, okay, what what um, what would be the target area that we want to focus on? So it's not just the how might we is linking up. It's saying, okay, given given all of the framing of the problem, um, does do, are there particular areas of the current current um, problem that that we can are leading? Okay. Yeah, that are leading us to focus. Yeah. So, so when we are talking about a current process, are we actually laying down a customer journey map 
or you, you know, can do a customer yeah. yeah you yeah. can do it a customer journey map is a good a good thing to do but it doesn't have to be it's usually only about sort of six to ten steps it's not it's not highly detailed because again you're trying to do this in in um you know an expedited time frame and so and you, you know you you know sometimes customer journey maps can take forever okay yeah. so now right going back to the last slide where you know we had the steps just wanted to understand where in in the map does this fit oh in which to uh, the, uh, which the traffic the, the our our traffic solving problem last slide last slide last but one just before thank you uh, yeah, yeah this one yeah yeah so prior to this one uh prior yeah yeah this one right we said right people will share their cars and i mean that's actual market hypothesis right so where in the map i mean is this actually related to the actual problem statement or is this related to one of the steps of a map uh, so i'm i'm imagining that as part of the design sprint mm -hmm. that um we together said we came up with an idea of saying um one of the solutions could be people sharing their private cars um instead of everybody taking their own car and so the hypothesis was you know if people shared their own cars um mm -hmm. it would save money time and the environment and so that was what the the hypothesis we were testing so it's it's, it's just one step of the entire map right that's what you're talking yeah so about. this is yeah so this is so we would we wouldn't only be doing we wouldn't necessarily only be doing this one but this okay. is but, but we we might we might do two or three but we wouldn't do more than that that's what I said before it doesn't mean that the other ideas don't nothing it doesn't mean that nothing happens to them it just means that you choose because we're doing we're doing um we're trying to choose the best the best ideas so whatever you know as a group you decide is the best that's what you want to take forward okay yeah. perfectly fine and that that's why you need to have your key objectives and your blockers within the within the sessions because if you're going to spend all the effort of trying to come up with these ideas and then do the work you don't want to then go back and say oh my god we found the best idea and then they say what are you talking about like we don't think this is the best idea and also we don't want to spend any time on doing this yeah okay awesome thanks thanks a lot for you know sharing your knowledge thank yeah, you thank you so much thanks great oh okay so Karthik, you're back that probably means it's time yes <laughs> uh yeah we are almost uh we have almost covered up everything i don't see any major questions in the chat for now but uh yeah, thank you so much, uh, Penelope, for the session. It was really a wonderful talk from your end. Mm -hmm.